Welcome. Today we are going to discuss memory fragmentation. It is a common problem in operating systems. We will learn about the different types of fragmentation and how they affect system performance. This is understanding internal and external fragmentation in operating systems. There are two main types of memory fragmentation. First, let's look at external fragmentation. This occurs when there is enough total free memory available to satisfy an allocation request, but the memory is scattered into small, non-contiguous blocks. The second is internal fragmentation. This occurs when memory is allocated in fixed size blocks, resulting in unused space within the allocated memory block. External fragmentation occurs when the total free memory space is enough to satisfy a request, but it's divided into small, non-contiguous blocks. Free memory exists, but it is scattered. It cannot allocate contiguous blocks. It is common in variable size partitioning and worsens over time with allocations and deallocations. Let us understand it with the help of an illustration. Initially, memory has process A, process B, process C, and some free space. After process B terminates, the memory has process A, then free space, then process C, and then free space. This is external fragmentation. Internal fragmentation occurs when memory is allocated in fixed size blocks, but the process doesn't need all the allocated space, resulting in wasted memory within allocated blocks. It occurs in fixed sized allocation schemes. The wasted space is inside the allocated blocks, and it cannot be used by other processes. It is common in paging and fixed partition systems, and the total waste increases with the number of allocations. Let us understand it with the help of an illustration. The first one shows a fixed partition memory of 20 kilobytes per partition. Partition 1 has 15 kilobytes used and 5 kilobytes wasted. Partition 2 has 10 kilobytes used and 10 kilobytes wasted. Partition 3 has 18 kilobytes used and 2 kilobytes wasted. Partition 4 has 5 kilobytes used and 15 kilobytes wasted. Hence, the total internal fragmentation is 32 kilobytes wasted, which is 40%, and 48 kilobytes used, which is 60%. There are various reasons that cause memory fragmentation. First, let's look at the causes of external fragmentation. One of the reasons is variable sized allocations. When processes of different sizes are allocated and deallocated over time, memory becomes divided into small, non-contiguous free blocks. Another reason is process lifetime variation. Processes with different lifetimes create unpredictable patterns of free spaces when they terminate at different times. The other reason is dynamic memory allocation. Runtime memory requests and releases create scattered free blocks throughout the memory space. Now, let us look at the causes of internal fragmentation. One reason is fixed size memory blocks, when memory is allocated in fixed sized units, like pages or partitions that are larger than what processes need. The other reason is memory alignment requirements. Hardware or software requirements for data alignment can lead to padding and unused space within allocated blocks. The other reason is minimum allocation size. System imposed minimum allocation sizes force small objects to use more memory than they actually need. Memory fragmentation has several negative impacts on system performance. First is memory wastage. Fragmentation leads to inefficient use of available memory, reducing the effective capacity of the system. This results in wasted memory in the range of 10 to 30%, and the impact level is high. The second impact is performance degradation. Fragmentation increases allocation time and can lead to more frequent garbage collection cycles. This causes allocation delay of 15 to 50%, and the impact level is medium. The other impact is allocation failures. Despite having sufficient total free memory, fragmentation can cause allocation requests to fail. This can result in a failure rate of 5 to 20% and the impact level is critical. There are several techniques that can be used to mitigate the effects of external fragmentation. One is compaction. 
This involves relocating processes in memory to place all free memory together in one large block. It creates contiguous free space and maximizes usable memory. However, it requires relocatable code and is an expensive operation, resulting in central processing unit overhead. The other technique is segmentation, dividing memory into variable size segments, each containing a logical unit of the program. This provides logical organization of memory and supports sharing and protection. However, it is still susceptible to fragmentation and results in complex memory management. The other technique is paging. It divides physical memory into fixed size blocks, called frames, and logical memory into pages of the same size. This eliminates external fragmentation and simplifies allocation algorithms. However, it introduces internal fragmentation and requires address translation hardware. The other technique is the buddy system. This memory allocation technique divides memory into partitions to satisfy a request as suitably as possible. It provides fast allocation and deallocation and reduces fragmentation over time. However, it has some internal fragmentation and is limited to power of two sizes. There are several solutions for internal fragmentation. One is variable size partitioning. Allocating exactly the amount of memory requested by a process, eliminating wasted space within blocks. This eliminates internal fragmentation and maximizes memory utilization. The other solution is multiple block sizes, using different sized memory blocks to better match allocation requests and reduce wasted space. This reduces average internal fragmentation and balances efficiency and complexity. The other solution is slab allocation, pre-allocating memory for specific object types, ensuring perfect fit for common allocation sizes. This minimizes fragmentation for common objects and improves allocation performance. The other solution is segmentation with paging, combining segmentation's logical organization with paging's fixed size blocks to reduce both types of fragmentation. This balances both fragmentation types and provides flexible memory management. Let's summarize what we have learned about memory fragmentation. External fragmentation is the free memory scattered in small blocks, and it occurs in variable size partitioning. The primary solutions are compaction and paging. This results in allocation failures despite free memory. Internal fragmentation is wasted space within allocated blocks, and it occurs in fixed size allocation schemes. The primary solutions are variable size blocks and slab allocation. This leads to inefficient memory utilization. Hence, both types of fragmentation reduce effective memory capacity. Most memory management schemes trade off between the two types. Modern systems often use hybrid approaches to minimize both. Fragmentation management is crucial for system performance. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.